Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, this is Dr. Lindy. Uh, we're broadcasting today, uh, episode six of Such is Life with Dr. Lindy. And I am your host, Dr. Lindy. Such is Life is sponsored by um, World Changer Sister Tribe um, under the auspices of the Princess uh, of Suburbia Foundation. Uh, to, to learn more about Sister Tribe, please go to join uh, www, go to bit.ly dot l y slash join Sister Tribe now uh, to find out more about Sister Tribe and um, all the great things that are happening uh, in our tribe. Uh, also, the uh, prayer requests that you can make. Uh, there are different forums going on right now. Uh, there is a forum going on for people that want to be entrepreneurs and, and all that good stuff. Uh, in today's episode, I have my friend Sue uh, that hails from India, and she is going to share with us uh, some of her experiences as a uh, an immigrant parent herself and her husband, who uh, who is not present today, um, and what their triumphs have been. Welcome, Sue, and thank you for welcoming me to your <laughs> yeah, house. Thank you, Lindy. Thank yes. you. Nice to be here. Yes. So, um, when did you come to the U.S.? Um, I came in um, 83 yes. as a student. I okay. wanted to study, and so that's how I came. All right. All right. Okay. 83. That's quite a while back. Yeah. And what made things change? Why are you still here? <laughs> Um, I got a um, couple of good degrees, yes. and um, I really, I'm an engineer, I really enjoy it, uh -huh. and um, I wanted to work for some of the top-notch companies, yes. I was very passionate about the work mm -hmm. that I did, mm -hmm. um, and so after I graduated, I started um, working here. Um, at that time in India, there uh, wasn't that much opportunity for right. women engineers and right. the major uh, leading corporations were not there. So yes. I ended up working. Mm -hmm. So great opportunities. Yes, yes. And then how did you, when did you get married and become a mom with those, with those two beautiful children? <laughs> yeah, so I in worked. I got married about uh, about six years later. Yes. You know, I met my husband while um, I was a student, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, life continues. Yes, you know, and, yes, um, it does. And, That's why we say such is life, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And then yeah, got married, and a few years after that, had kids. Yes, yes, yeah. awesome, awesome. So what, is, what has your experience been like uh, coming from the Indian culture and having children in the U.S. in a different culture and raising them here? How has that experience been? Um, it's, it's been a mixed experience. Um, it's, um, you know, the early years were um, great. I... Um, don't feel like there was a significant difference. Mm -hmm. um, I Is that because the kids were little or because you were young? Um, I think um, all of the above. Mm -hmm. The um, kids were little. Of course, you know, I had more energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they say small kids, small problems, big yes, kids, big problems. That is so true. And so that's really... I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, and then um, culturally when they were little, I mm -hmm. didn't see much difference in culture either. Yes, um, even because when, you could mold them and shape yeah, them and according even when to the I way came, you were raised. Like, I, I am really from a, you know, big city mm -hmm. in India and from, uh, I belong to a very highly educated family. That helps. Um, so, yeah, so, so the exposure I to other cultures. Came, yes. um, I, even in the U.S., mm -hmm. my life was um, 
very, very similar to yeah. my life in India. Awesome. There really wasn't a significant difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so when the kids were little, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, business as usual. There was, um, yeah, no, I mean, they were home, they were you know we uh, they were born in the detroit area right right and a very uh, multicultural environment mm -hmm. uh, people from all walks of life yes so yeah in the early years there were no issues at mm -hmm. all yeah mm -hmm. what changed what changed i think homesickness uh, <laughs> not really <laughs> get homesick and would it change things i think what changed is um uh, moving from the Detroit area right. to Arizona, to Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what really changed for us. Yes. Um, uh, we moved to Tucson, and it's uh, first of all, I think it's a much much um, smaller city right. uh, compared to Detroit area. Oh, definitely, and also compared to you know, where I come from in mm -hmm. India. So mm -hmm. um, it seemed like a very small village. Yeah. And um, so obviously what I find is that um, people's perceptions, attitudes, behaviors, mm -hmm. uh, they're all molded by their education and the yes. uh, environment that they yes. live in. Yes, yes. And so, and if you're just joining us, I'm talking to my friend Sue, and this is Such Is Life with Dr. Lindy, and it's uh, sponsored by the um, Princess of Suburbia Foundation, and we're under the Sister Tribe handle. If you'd like to know more about Sister Tribe, please visit us at bit.ly slash join Sister Tribe now. Or you can also look us up on Facebook under World Changes Sister Tribe. Thank you. So, yeah, so in Tucson, like, if we found that it was not very multicultural. Mm -hmm. um, even the local population, the, um, the Caucasian population, wasn't as progressive thinking as the population in Detroit. In the Midwest. Um, yeah. yeah, the Midwest area. And um, and then, of course, the diversity just yeah. wasn't there. Now, how did that affect you and, and the way you were trying to do things with your family? It didn't affect me um uh, personally so much mm -hmm. um, and I believe because you know I was already older I was almost 21 when I came to US yes um, and my internal strength you know was already there mm -hmm. um, that's very so very confident internal strength yes. yeah I was already very confident mm -hmm. of who I was yes. and confident of myself yes. so it didn't um, impact me directly but mm -hmm. it impacted me through my children yes uh, my children came um, when they were in elementary school and in middle school. Right. Um, and um, the school environment uh, wasn't, you know, the best um, of the environments. Um, uh, my kids faced a lot of cultural biases, a yes. lot of um, uh, people were very ignorant. Mm -hmm. And not only that, um, the history material uh, would, um, you know, give the kids wrong impression. And I found that most of the problems came from history classes and the yes. lunch breaks where wow. people were not supervised. Wow, yes. Um, so that's what I said that mm -hmm. early years there were, you know, no problems. I didn't feel that life was any different mm -hmm. um you know in America. because you were already well grounded 
So you yes. didn't have to go through the well, system. Grounded yes. and um, and we lived in a very progressive uh, yeah. progressive area wow. of the country, yeah. highly people and even the town we lived in, um, the education level was very high because mm-hmm. Um, of the Detroit metro area, you yes. know, with all the auto companies, mm-hmm. um, people are, you know, people working there, you know, a lot of them are engineers, mm-hmm. there's a mm-hmm. lot of um, um, hospitals, so a yes. lot of, you know, people working in the hospitals. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you, when you talk about, what a, when you talk about education, I think it's important to clarify that you're not saying that people in the Southwest or people in Arizona are less educated. It's just talking about understanding other cultures. Understanding and, and other cultures with, and also mm-hmm. maybe the percentage yes, wise, yes. you know, the, mm-hmm. in terms of the uh, percentage of the population. So mm-hmm. it's a combination yes. of both, you mm-hmm. know, um, like what kind of jobs exist. So mm-hmm. um, in the in in the Detroit area, maybe there's a higher percentage of jobs, yes. um, you know, that require higher education, mm-hmm. whereas um, here there's probably a lower percentage. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, and also, you know, like I said, it's a smaller town, the progressiveness, mm-hmm. the culture, yes, um, you yes. know, that's Multi- like, culturalism. yeah, so yeah. that's really different. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, um, yeah, so he, he, that was a major, major um, um, difference and mm-hmm. that uh, really impacted yeah. our family. So what have you done? I know the kids are doing well. They are now grown. <laughs> what have you done? What were you able to do? What were you and your husband able to do to help the children cope? Because, I mean, they're not from India. They're from here, and they're treated differently. And you know about both cultures, and you know uh, how you're well-grounded, and you know how your children to be treated so that they can grow in their own selves. So what did you do? at home what did you do at home to help them to cope with all this um actually my hands have been quite tight there yeah. isn't um a um, whole lot i could do mm-hmm. the because the community is not there um i tried but uh that there was and and i think that contributed to the problem we had a very um, a strong uh, group of friends and yes. community in the Detroit area mm-hmm. and here we didn't know anybody right. um, and we couldn't find a community that you know we felt we belonged to mm-hmm. and so the kids got you know beaten up in school um, you know um, in, in terms of you know emotionally and then there wasn't anything at home mm-hmm. only thing I could do is just get therapy and more therapy and more therapy and yes. then um, the goal was to try to just um, you know move away from here mm-hmm. um, which took a um, you know um, long time to right. move them out right. um, it's taken you know many many years mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff is irreversible, but right, th- there wasn't right. a whole lot mm-hmm. um, that I could do mm-hmm. um, in the environment that exists here. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What would you What would you have liked to see? Um, say, if you wanted, if you had the opportunity to start a community here. What are some things that you would like to see in, say, the members of the community um, so that there could be an understanding, so that there could be uh, maybe some learning going on where, you know, people in that particular community would learn from one another or glean from one another? What what, what are some things? There really has to be a willingness to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, that's... um really the problem and the attitudes um, mm-hmm. um, of caring. Pe- mm-hmm. People think, oh, 
you know, because nothing is happening in their life, they yes. think, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right. It only happens to somebody else mm-hmm. unless mm-hmm. they get hit with it themselves. Right, right. So it's really, you know, for people to have the compassion and mm-hmm. to have a willingness, willingness mm-hmm. to learn. Mm-hmm. And um, really more so, you know, I think from the school systems, mm-hmm. the attitudes, um, because when somebody moves, they go, they go, they start probably starting a new job. They yes. get to meet people through mm-hmm. the school because the kids go to a school that's, mm-hmm. you know, uh, one major, um, you know, social environment or right. community, uh, right. friends that people pick up from. Mm-hmm. So it's really, you know, people um, having the right attitudes Mm -hmm. I think that's what's really important the school administrations having the right attitude the teachers having the right attitude Mm -hmm. towards um, all children all all the children because it really starts from the school administrations then Mm -hmm. it moves down to the teachers so um, it's really I think what you promote and Mm -hmm. and that's where you know the community you Mm -hmm. know comes from it's like um and what what are some of the people in in a position of power promoting yes and then do the people have a willingness to learn wow and those are powerful to engage yeah that's that's um what I think it's powerful about. statements. So, what are the people in the position of power willing to do, and what are the people in the community willing to do to engage? That's um, awesome. I That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. know what they're willing to do, yeah. but um, but I did find that you know um, some some schools and some mm-hmm. administrators are willing to have like um, um, educational seminars, yes. workshops, mm-hmm. presentations mm-hmm. Uh, for people. Right here. To, in, yeah, in to have, yeah, some people, yeah. not all. I mean, mm-hmm. we would definitely need it to yes. expand. That would be to so To have like an ed- so education sessions, yes. you know, for people mm-hmm. um, to do activities together. Mm-hmm. And also I find... Um, getting to know you type yeah, activities. Yeah, and yes. also the history curriculum, I yes. feel, uh, needs to put things in context. Oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> because that I found, um, no matter which school yes, is. Yes, it does. Someone just the, made a comment that said, that sounds awesome. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Those so are awesome the, ideas. The history really, uh, no, I, I, I found that was one subject regardless mm-hmm. of the school. Yes that creates more bias Mm -hmm. and more ignorance because of what they teach Mm -hmm. and how they teach teach it's completely out of context Mm -hmm. like one um i don't know what this kid studied he told he asked my daughter this kid in the neighborhood oh do you have eight hands because he must have either studied about this one Indian goddess mm-hmm. and you know there there is like a lot of um, information there yes. but he probably didn't understand everything mm-hmm. has things completely out of context right. and that really hurt my daughter and mm-hmm. she was crying and I said well next time you know say hey let me look maybe they're hidden under right, my t-shirt right. let's find where my <laughs> other hands are so I'm glad we it's, you it's, taught him yeah, to have a it's sense like, of humor you know <laughs> sometimes and, that's all we and can that's, do right that's what it's like huh where do you get that kind yeah. of remark from? And, and yeah. there are many, many more remarks, you know. You know, what I wonder is where that kid is now because your daughter is um, entering med school. Yeah, I have <laughs> so no clue. Where is he? And actually... <laughs> With his uh, it, history it, of eight yeah. hands. <laughs> and, and it really, really hurts these children. And yes. that's what I try to mm-hmm. um, tell my children. Hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. You don't need to worry about people who mm-hmm. say stuff and be like proud that. Of your culture. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they if they're not gonna educate themselves, mm-hmm. 
they're not going to go anywhere. We yes. do live in a yes. global environment. You yes. know, we have airplanes, we have internet, people yes. are traveling. Yes. You're n no longer in a cocoon. That's right. And so it's they very to important to have an understanding yes. uh, of different cultures. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. And also yeah. have a sensitivity. Sensitivity, yes. yeah, and mm -hmm. to have that love for mm -hmm. everybody, you yes. know, um, to have that respect for mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. um, to treat each human like yes. a human, you right. know, you right. you just um, have to learn to behave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know that's interesting that you said that because that's one of the things that um, the sister tribe is about, bringing people together from. All sorts of part, all parts of the world, mm -hmm. and just coming together and agreeing on some things that we value right. as humans, right. beginning with love, just yes. love for one another. Yes, absolutely. You know, that is just so important. We we so wish that those kinds of things could happen in our communities, yeah. not just the virtual communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love conquers all. Yes, it does. And, and I think um, that's another problem. Like, you know, you mentioned virtual community. Mm -hmm. Kids have gotten used to just, um, um, you know, playing in a virtual community. They'll mm -hmm. get onto Xbox and they have this virtual community that right. they're playing in. Mm -hmm. So when you're not interacting face to face, you're yes. not doing things together. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe like playing board games or like going bowling together, doing mm -hmm. stuff. Then yeah. you know you don't. You don't learn. get to have yeah. that, that communication, yeah. that one-on-one. -on -one you communication. don't learn. You don't learn yeah. people skills. You don't yes. um, get to develop an understanding. That's right. And and schools could encourage more of those things, and parents could encourage. So mm -hmm. that would be you know. Right, like a willingness right. to learn and to have the yeah. attitude in the community yeah yeah as a community as a community that's so awesome. to have that yes, that's behaviors awesome. yeah yeah i really hope we can continue this conversation because you you mentioned some very important points you know some very important points that people really need to to think about who is in their neighborhood Right. Who are they? What are they about? Mm -hmm. What can we glean from one another? Yeah, absolutely. And, and get to doing that. Mm -hmm. I think if that begins to happen in the, you know, in these grassroots uh, associations, then the schools will have to pick up on that. Yeah. The schools will have to pick up on that because uh, unfortunately we don't see that in the College of Education you know, coming from uh, from from an educator's perspective. I mean, I know that we don't see that in the well, college of the, education. The problem is, like, take for example Tucson. Tucson is a city of transplants. Mm -hmm. People are moving from everywhere. Right. So they don't know anybody. They don't mm -hmm. know their neighbors. They just buy a house or rent a house or mm -hmm. whatever, and they go. Mm -hmm. So where does, what is the starting point? Yeah. And in my mind, the schools are the starting points yeah. because that's where... Well, you, what about you, the neighborhood associations? That could be one, mm -hmm. but a lot of uh, places, um, I, I mean, I have never seen a neighborhood association meeting invite coming up mm -hmm. or maybe once in six months. Yeah. Like all, all the neighborhoods I've lived in, I've never seen one. Right, right. And I, maybe I, that's something for us to explore. Mm, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps yeah. if, if one yes. is a homeowner. Right, so like right. we have been renting, mm -hmm. yeah. so there's nothing, you know, a lot of people when that's they true. move from other places, mm -hmm. they're renting. They're renting and so yeah. they're not part of the neighborhood they're, association. Yeah. So, so, but, but that is definitely, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, one avenue mm -hmm. uh, for the neighborhood, yeah, mm -hmm. um, associations. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad the kids are doing well. And I'm sorry about all the frustrations, but I know you're doing well, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll continue this yes. conversation. Yes. thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for uh, talking to me. Uh, and you've been watching Such is Life with Dr. Lindy. And um, I am the host, Dr. Lindy, signing off. <laughs>